Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. The greatest fans on earth. It's a bold statement, but would you expect anything less from Philadelphia? 58 years of heartache creates a toughness, a grit, a resolve not found in most. Sure, our prayers were answered, but now that we've had a taste, we're looking for more. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Post game show with Seth Joyner. I knew that they had a running game. Derek Gunn. He has put in the effort. Devin Caney. Had we not won the Super Bowl, what would we be saying? And Mike Missanelli. Well, you know how Philly is. Post game, now streaming on the 6ABC family of apps. Happy New Year, everybody. Week 17 in the NFL. Mark Farzetta, Seth Joyner, Derek Gunn joining you for the Jacob Media pregame show ahead of the Eagles taking on the Saints. Yet again, we are in this play once again. Eagles win. They clinch the top seed. They clinch the NFC East. Who will be at the helm when it comes to quarterback? All reports, and the Eagles even said that Jalen Hurts is doubtful going into this game. Looking like Jalen Hurts will miss his second consecutive week with that shoulder injury. Gardner Minshew will get the start today as the Eagles take on the Saints. Gunner, let's start with you. How serious is this issue with Jalen Hurts? Would he be ready come week 18 if need be? Yeah, uh, this is more of a precautionary measure. Um, he, he could play. But um, I applaud the Eagles for taking the extra measure. Um, you know, P- Gardner Minshew has more than enough attributes and enough assets around him to, to beat the Saints today. Um, th- there's a bigger picture on the horizon when you look at a Jalen Hurts. And even if he doesn't play next week against the Giants, uh, this is a team that's loaded for the playoff run. This is a team that's focused on the playoff run. Obviously, you want to get that home field advantage because, as we saw, take Buffalo, prime example. You look at how Buff- Buffalo has yo-yoed up and down from the one seed to the five seed over the last month. Now they're in control again, uh, and they got to take care of business. This Eagles team, all they do is need to win this one game. But we've seen across the board in the National Football League all season long, always, Always expect the unexpected. This has been the most unpredictable year that I can remember in quite some time. Every week, on an average, there's been three to five shocker results across the league. You don't take this Saints team lightly. Uh, To the point, you know, it's all hands on deck. Uh, I just saw a report earlier today that Marshawn Lattimore, who hasn't played for the Saints since October 9th because of an abdomen injury, he's playing today all of a sudden. You look at Chris Olave, who's been having uh, hamstring issues. Oh, he's playing in this game today. It's all hands on deck because th- the Saints do have a faint hope of getting in the playoffs. They have to run the table and get a little bit of help. But it's the National Football League. It's exactly what the NFL is. Parity late in the season. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Seth, uh, let's go to Jalen Hurts once again. Precautionary, you just heard it from Gunner right there. Do you think this is a situation that if the Eagles were playing for that top seed today and it was their last chance if this was week 18, do you think he would be playing in today's game? I, I think he would. I, and, you know, we've seen him, seen videos of him running around in practice this week, throwing some little short um, passes around. I think that if if he was, if they really needed him to go, that he would go and, and, and Gunner, you know, I, we always agree on everything. The thing I disagree with, they cannot, they cannot go into next week's game and have Gardner Minshew play next week's game and have Jalen Hurts essentially go four to five weeks without playing. He must play some football mm-hmm. either next week, you know, or mm-hmm. I don't know whether they're even going to have him active today, you know, but he needs to be playing. Um, And and yeah, you know, listen, Gardner Minshew's played well. The two games that they've asked him to play in the last two years, he's stepped up. He's gotten the job done. You know, they came, fell a little short last week. Um, But the dynamic of this offense, you know, is built upon the athleticism and the skill set of Jalen Hurts. Um, You know, he can give them the short passing game. Every once in a while, he may be, maybe even, maybe even able, excuse me, to stretch the field 
passing the ball, you know, if you get it out of his hands early. But what really makes this offense go is the threat of Jalen Hurts being able to run the football. And when you don't have that there and his ability to scramble and make plays on the move, when you don't have that as a part of that offense, you're missing something. Um, This Saints team, you know, there's a lot of bad blood between, you know, this team and the Philadelphia Eagles team. You go all the way back to 2017 and and the comments that Alvin Kamara made, you know, uh, the miracle in Minnesota and them having to come here for the NFC championship and feeling like, um, you know, that should have been them instead of Minnesota. And they, and them saying that they would have come to Philly and beat us. Um, you got Jalen Hurts two years ago in his first pro start against the New Orleans Saints. And, you know, he goes in and, and wins the game as a rookie against the number one um, ranked defense in the National Football League. Um, and then you throw into the mix, you know, this number one draft pick, you know, this year and what what this game means to that positionally. Um, I think that the Eagles are going to get everything that the Saints got today. And they better be checked in, locked and loaded and ready to go from the jump. Because if you give this team, because they, they've got some players on the defensive side of the ball. They got some That's guys. Right. Cam Jordan's is going to be coming. Demario Davis is going to be coming. And if you give those guys an inkling of belief that they could win this football game, the weather's going to be, what, 50, 55, almost 60 degrees, mm-hmm. prime, great weather. We don't have the advantage of, of cold weather. Um, they better be locked and loaded and ready to go today and take whatever little bit of fight that this 5-10 and 10 or 4-11 and 11 team has in them. They better be ready to snatch it from their souls early. <laughs> Let's hope that's the case. And obviously after last week, the Eagles had a record worst day in terms of yards allowed in that game against the Dallas Cowboys, despite a couple of short yardage situations, thanks to turnovers, courtesy of the Philadelphia Eagles offense, those uncharacteristic turnovers that Nick Sirianni held, held Nick Sirianni likes to describe them. But Seth, how hungry is this defense going to be to go after the quarterback today? How hungry are they going to be to make that big play and force those turnovers against this Saints offense? Well, I'll tell you this, you know, there's massive competition going on on that defensive line. Um, You know, you got three guys that's got 10 plus sacks. One guy is hovering right there, you know, on the cusp of joining them. Um, And, you know, Jonathan Gannon is not going to he's not going to call the game any differently. You know, I don't I don't believe that he can trust Josiah Scott. And, and read Blankenship to the to the level that he would trust the normal starters that would be in there. When you have Avante Maddox in there, um, you know you saw in the first half what he was willing to how he what he was willing to chance last week. I don't think he does that with Josiah Scott unless Josiah Scott has some kind of epiphany this weekend in practice and figured out you know where he's supposed to be and he's communicating with everybody back there. Unless you see that, I don't think it's really going to change that much. Um, but they're going to get after Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton runs hot and cold all the time. He can be on fire one game or one half, and he could be ice cold and throw it to you three or four times the next half. You know, they've got to encourage that right now. I think the one thing that Jonathan Gannon is going to have to do, D-Gun, is he's going to have to get his corners up, and they're going to have to challenge the wide receivers at the line of scrimmage because Andy Dalton will not hold on to the football. No. He's going to go short passing game. He's going to get that ball out one, two, three, and out one, two, three, and out. He's going to do everything he can not to give this defense the chance to upset the apple cart. And I believe that they're going to call the game that way. So the Eagles are going to have to get up, challenge the wide receivers at the line of scrimmage, be in position to knock some of these quick passes down. You know what, Seth? How many times have we talked about that throughout the course of this season and we sit there pulling our hair out or our nubs in our case um, <laughs> because he allows – the DBs to play seven and 10 yards off the ball. So as much as I agree with you, I don't think we're going to see it. He may try to mix and match a little bit, but I think he's he's still going to have these guys five, seven, eight yards off the ball and allow them to complete stuff underneath. And I think that's a bad recipe, a bad recipe for allowing an inferior opponent to think that they can hang with this Eagles team for 60 minutes of football. Now, we don't know to what the severity is of the hamstring injury that has been plaguing uh, Chris Olave. But that young man is a special receiver. If I'm the Saints, I move him right to the slot and test him against Josiah Scott all day and force the Eagles to make some adjustments. They don't have Michael Thomas in their arsenal. There's no Jarvis Landry today. The focus will be on Chris Olave. 
what will they do to blanket this young man? Reed Blankenship is a good young player, but he still makes mistakes. Josiah Scott is like Jekyll and Hyde. You don't know who's going to show up week in and week out. As weird as it sounds, Josiah Scott has played better football when he's been called upon a few times to start than when he's had to come in and replace somebody due to injury. Well, it looks like today he is going to start. So I'm hoping that helps him settle in and play a much more consistent brand of football. But Seth, we can sit here and beat our heads against the tables all day. I do not expect to see Jonathan Gannon have his Pro Bowl corners come up and play physical against whoever is playing wide receiver for the Saints today. Well, I think a lot of it too, Mark, is, okay, what's the recipe? You know that Alvin Kamara is more than formidable as a running back, not only running the football, but out of the backfield, okay? So you got to take care of the run to begin with. If you can take care of the run, that means that you don't have to commit as many assets to the box, you know, on second and long and third and long situations. Then the other situations you get yourself into, I think one of the um, – and, and D-Gun, listen, yeah. he might not want to do it. And, and I think what happens with Josiah Scott is that Josiah Scott, when he's starting, he gets a full week of practice. Right. When you get a full week of practice, you get the communication and, you know, you, you get the reps and you get everything that you need. So maybe he's a little better under those circumstances. That tells me, you know, that when he's not starting, he's not mm -hmm. preparing himself as properly as he needs to be because you're always just one play away. But, okay, I'll keep an eye on that and see how he does, you know, in a situation where he's starting today. Um, but the other thing that it brings into the mix is, you know, Jonathan Gannon's mindset. Okay, if if I've got to commit assets to a Chris Olave in the slot against Josiah, then what does that do to the rest of the secondary? What does that do to the run game? Um, because now you're at a disadvantage as far as the numbers are concerned in the run game. And coverage-wise, somebody across the board has got to play man-to-man -man with no yeah. help at all. Mm -hmm. The thing is, when you look at an Alvin Kamara, uh, his numbers have been down compared to how we've been accustomed to see him, him playing. Only 717 yards rushing, but he has almost 1,200 yards in total offense, okay? The last two games, all of a sudden the Saints have given Alvin Kamara the football in the running game 20 and 21 times. Mm. They've won both of those games. Alvin Kamara, before these two games, had not had 20 carries in a game since week number three of the season. Okay, all of a sudden he realized they need to rely on him a lot more for this offense to be effective. And Seth, you were talking about Andy Dalton. There's a reason why Dalton has only been sacked 18 times. That ball's coming out of his hands. Now, the Eagles' defensive front can be effective just by getting pressure on him, forcing him to make decisions a lot sooner. Getting him down on the ground is going to be difficult for a defense that has been averaging six sacks a game for the last four games. But you don't need to get him down to, to, to rattle Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton is not the same quarterback he was four or five years ago. But he has shown moments this season when he can resort to being that Andy Dalton of four or five years ago. You don't want to see that Andy Dalton today, even with a depleted receiving core. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Uh, the other thing that comes into the factor here when it comes to the Eagles defense is how they're going to approach not just Alvin Kamara, but also in this uh, Taysom Hill character that seems to give a lot of teams headaches, especially in crunch time. Like last week against the Browns, he's able to come up with a touchdown, help get the Browns back into that game. And then Alvin Kamara gets another touchdown in that game to actually put the uh, Saints over the top with the Browns scoring those two touchdowns in the third quarter. They seem to throw a lot of curveballs at defenses. So for me, when it comes to what Jonathan Gannon is going to be doing in this this game, I consider this to be a pretty simple, keep it simple, stupid type of game for the Eagles defense. And when it comes to their guys in the middle, like a guy like uh, Trent Edwards, for instance, how are you going to deploy him when it comes to getting after the quarterback if they do decide to do that? Are you going to have him be spying on Hill this entire game? Are you going to have him spying on Kamara this entire game? How are you going to be using those guys in the middle of the line? And also, probably the biggest factor in all this, it's not just Josiah Scott that needs to bounce back, back week Kazir White has been playing a pretty good linebacker position for this Eagles team on the outside and last week had a lot of struggles was biting and read option plays was biting on pump fakes from Dak Prescott he had really struggled last week and if there's one guy other than Josiah Scott that I see that needs to bounce back it's Kazir White in this game and I think mm -hmm. with the curveballs they can throw from this offense and Andy Dalton being a pretty accurate quarterback and getting rid of the ball quick you look at a guy like Kazir White that I think Seth needs to jump back in this game mm -hmm. 
Well, listen, he's going to have his hands full today because he's going to be the guy on Alvin Kamara in second and long and third and long situations with him coming out of the backfield. D-Gun talked about, you know, that 500-plus yards in receiving that Alvin Kamara has. That's going to be his job. Um, I, I would caution you, I don't know who it's going to be, but whoever it is on the strong side, whether it's a tight end or they go trips, you know, and whoever that third guy is on the on the strong side, look for the New Orleans Saints to take a, a page out of the Dallas Cowboys playbook because they've been putting T.J. Edwards in conflict lately. They go trips mm -hmm. and they swap the tight end and the wide receiver and put mm -hmm. the wide receiver inside and the tight end either in the slot or outside. So even in zone coverages, the task is on um, T.J. Edwards to cover the number three receiver. Um, last week, they just had a field day against him between Blake Jarwin and and um, C.D. <laughs> Lamb in zone. Um, they, they just had a field day against T.J. Edwards. But, you know, listen, Kazir White, you know, I, I, he's going to have to be the difference maker when it comes to, um, you know, Alvin Kamara because the Eagles can't afford to – commit resources to help him and Josiah Scott. Then it's like pick your poison. Um, as far as Taysom Hill is concerned, listen, I go zero coverage against Taysom Hill, and I just load the box up. You know he's going to run the football. He has thrown some balls this year. Um, I'm not sure how many touchdown passes he's thrown, but I know he's thrown some, some deep balls and completed them. But there's not very many guys that I'm afraid of in that situation. I take Darius Slay, and I put him on Chris Olave – and I move uh, Josiah Scott outside or inside or wherever it is and just go zero coverage and load the box and say, hey, I need you guys to, you know, make Taysom Hill, you know, throw a good ball. But we're going to bring pressure and we're going to load the box and we're going to make him in ineffective because we're going to take every <clears throat> gap across the board and make sure that he doesn't run. And if he does throw, we're going to bring pressure and get after him. The thing about New Orleans' version of the Wildcat is with a Taysom Hill back there, it's not just a running scheme. He will step back. He will throw a pass. He's 11 of 17 this year, two touchdown passes. They will run like a jet sweep version of the Wildcat as well. They're very creative with their verse. Taysom Hill is a phenomenal athlete across the board. You look at most teams that run the Wildcat, they run it with a running back or a wide receiver. So you know it's going to be a running play, but not with Taysom Hill. He is a strong, physical, fast individual that creates a multitude of problems uh, for any defense. So when people say, oh, it's easy to defend the Wildcat, no, it's not, because you don't know what he's going to do, and you don't know what this Saints offensive coordinator has in store. I mean, what has Lane Johnson told us every week for the last month or so? Every time they have faced an opponent, they have seen something when the game unfolds that they did not see in the film film room all week long leading up to that game and I expect more from the Saints you know every co every coordinator every head coach has a certain arsenal of plays in his playbook they save specifically for the latter part of a season or in the playoffs if they're fortunate enough to get in the playoffs with, with the Saints being in a situation they are right now if the Saints run the table as bad as that division is as bad as their record is if the Saints run the table and get some help with Carolina beating Tampa today. And then, of course, the Saints get Carolina next week. Guess what? The Saints win the NFC South. They're in the playoffs. It's that simple. So they have as much to play for as the Eagles. Now, they don't score a lot of points, but that defense doesn't give up a lot of points. That's going to be an interesting matchup with this Eagles offense. Yeah, just for the uh, the record, the Saints averaged 20.2 points per game. That's what they score. That's ranked 22nd in the NFL. Their defense ranked 14th in the NFL when it comes to 21.7 points allowed per game. So they're definitely no slouch when it comes to the defense. However, last week against the Dallas Cowboys, the Eagles were taking on a football team that had the most takeaways in the NFL, and it certainly showed in that game with the Eagles turning the football over four times in that game. This time around, the New Orleans Saints just have 11 takeaways mm -hmm. on the defensive side of the ball going into it. Turnovers have been a big deciding factor in both losses from the Eagles, both to the Commanders and the Cowboys. Is it a little bit? I mean, you can never relax. You can never break focus. But I'm sure that's a little bit of a comforting factor when it comes to taking or when it comes to how many giveaways you had in the previous week taking on a defense like this, Gunner, in what the Saints are actually putting out there on the football team, uh, football field, a team that doesn't take the football away. 
Well, the Saints are minus 12 in the takeaway giveaway department. You know, and that's been one of the biggest Achilles heels for this team in terms of not being able to find a better measure of success. The Eagles have to get some turnovers. They have to win the turnover battle. They've lost the last two turnover battles to Chicago and Dallas. They've given the football up seven times in the last two games. That's unheard of. When it comes to the turnover battle in general, for me, the big key is watch the body language of Miles Sanders today. You look at his body language from last week after he caught that ball up, head down, had to be consoled. You listen to him talk to the media after the game, very distraught over what happened. This is a young man now who has fumbled the ball twice in two games, hadn't fumbled the football all season long. I think it's imperative you get him going early between the tackles against the Saints defense is giving up 132 yards a game rushing on the ground. Of course, we've said that the last two weeks. Look at what happened in Chicago. They ran the ball 33 times. That's a, that's a good, healthy dose of running the football, but they only had 112 yards rushing. Following week against Dallas, they ran the football 29 times, only had 87 yards rushing. So obviously defenses are loading the box more and daring them to throw the football as crazy as that sounds. They're more concerned about controlling the running game than they are the passing game. Oh, by the way, Chicago stayed in that game taking that approach. Dallas found a way to win the game taking that approach. I think the Saints have a better defense personnel-wise than both the Cowboys and the Bears. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Saints try to throw at this offense to keep them in check. What was this one? Let's go back to that for a second. The Saints better defense, personnel. better personnel, better personnel than the Cowboys. Yes, the Cowboys. Cowboys defense is predicated on a pass rush. They are sieve against I, the run. Okay, mm -hmm. you look at the Saints defense. If Marshawn Lattimore is coming back to play, you have Tyron Matthew in the back end of that defense. You got a good edge rusher and Cameron Jordan over here, Marcus Davenport on the other side. You have one of the best inside linebackers in the game in Demario Davis. You have another good inside linebacker in Caden Ellis as well. Um, you've got a, got a lot of good talent on the Saints defense. They haven't gotten the notoriety because of the team's lack of success. Do not discount what this Saint, and you have a pretty good uh, defensive coordinator as your head coach a guy who's highly respected around the league and De Dennis Allen for his defensive prowess. Mm -hmm. Do not underestimate the capability of the Saints defense. Well, Seth, now I'm scared. Now I'm a little, now I'm a little scared. Now I'm a little no. scared about this game. No. <laughs> no, but when it comes to the takeaways, that's the biggest thing for me. I mean, that's where the games are won and lost, especially with this Eagles. If there was any poster season for turnovers affecting wins and losses, it would be a 13-2 and two Philadelphia Eagles 2022-2023 team, of course. Uh, Seth, offensively speaking, we'll get in this with John McMullen coming up in just a second, but uh, uh, offensively speaking, uh, from your perspective as a former linebacker, looking at this Eagles offense, Jack Driscoll, I'm sure, is a guy that you guys would want to attack a lot if he's going to be lining up there at the right tackle position. Lane Johnson's a great – he's a pro bowler, as we all know. But when it comes to – what you need to do to protect Gardner Minshew in this game? Will Jack Driscoll, the former uh, fourth-round pick uh, from two years ago, be up to the task today? Well, I mean, he has been thus far. And, you know, you haven't seen, you know, the panic move of moving Jordan Mailata over to the right side and Andre Dillard, you know, to the left side. That, 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 that move or the lack thereof speaks volumes about what they think about Jack Driscoll, you know, opposed to what they think of, um, you know, Andre Dillard. Um, but listen, he's going to get a steady dose of Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan's going to be coming to death. There's just no doubt about it. You know, when you see the backup and you can make hay on the backup, they're going to be coming. Now, if Jack can stand up, you know, um, there won't be any problems. But if he can't stand up, that means that, you know, um, <clears throat> you, you're going to have to, you know, commit, you know, some tight end help to him. You're going to have to commit a back to chip to him. So that takes away from a little bit of the, the um, creativity and what you want to do protection wise um, when you have a weak link and you got to help him out on the edge like that. But listen, it is what it is. And it is of utmost importance that they figure out a way to keep Gardner Minshew clean so he can make good decisions that are unhurried and unpressured in the pocket because they cannot, they cannot, afford to turn the ball over Listen, the saints got four four interceptions on the whole season four yeah. okay yep. those 11 turnovers they got four interceptions and seven calls fumble that's pretty paltry you know for defense when you talk about how many games that they've already played um 
with seven fumble f- calls fumbles, um, you know, Miles is going to have to put two hands on the ball until he breaks the line of scrimmage and he's in a situation in the clear where he can run with the ball with one hand. Um, but the more important thing, in my opinion, is making sure that you keep Gardner Minshew clean so that when you want to run, the, when you want to pass the football, that he's unhurried. Listen, the Saints, the, the scary thing is, Mark, and you talk about being afraid. Um, when you look at that Dallas defense mm-hmm. last week and where they ranked, and this Saints defense and where they ranked, um, they look similar. Going into last week's game, the Dallas Cowboys defense was ranked number two. Um, and and I think they were ranked 20 something, you know, against the pass. Well, those numbers look eerily similar to, you know, what you have with the Saints. The Saints ranked number two in pass defense, 23rd against the run. Okay. So now, what are you going to do? Are you going to take advantage of the fact that you can run the football at this foot at this team? Or are you going to come out chucking the ball all over the map like you did last week against the Dallas mm-hmm. Cowboys? You know, I would say that's the way you go about this. But we know that Nick Sirianni and his staff, that has not been the conventional, you know, thought to do it that way. Um, And and, and if I'm a defensive coordinator, I'm telling my guys, go get the quarterback. We'll worry Mm -hmm. about the run Mm -hmm. later on because if they're not committed to it, then we're not going to commit the resources to it. All right. So so I just got confirmation. It is Jack Driscoll on the right side. It will be Driscoll today on the right side. Okay. To me, losing Lane Johnson, as crazy as it sounds, is bigger in this game today than losing Jalen Hurts, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Jack Driscoll is a better run blocker than he is a pass blocker, okay? If you go back to that Dallas game, the last play of the game where Minshew threw it to the end zone and was game over, you look at how Driscoll got pushed back into Minshew, which altered his throw a little bit. Now, of course, Dallas had a trio of defenders in the end zone, so the probability of completing that pass was slim. But Driscoll is a much better player moving forward than he is setting up to move backwards. That's why I said it's imperative for the Eagles to establish the run. Hit this team between the tackles. Hit them in the mouth. Control the clock. Go down the field. Put points on the board. The Saints are not built to play catch-up football. If they get on, if they stay even with you and get on or get on top of you, they're a much more formidable foe. If you can get up by a double-digit score on the Saints team, they're not this comeback type of offense. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I think it's imperative for them to establish the run. You know, it's funny. We say, well, they didn't run the ball all that well the last two weeks. 33 carries and 29 carries is a very good dose of running a football in any game. No matter, They didn't get the results. They've got to find a way to get the results now against this Saints defense. Keep that defense on his heels. Keep them moving backwards. Control that clock. Put points on the board. Make them come out of their comfort zone. Make them come out of their game plan. Whatever their scripted game plan is, make them come out of it and throw the football more. That's where that defense has that Saints offense right where it wants. Gotcha. Uh, Gunner, uh, Seth, let's go to the link right now. We're going to talk to our friend, NFL insider for Jacob Media and host of Birds 365. Uh, he is brought to us, uh, John McMullen, brought to us by Thrive Financial Services. Get the Thrive Financial Service Retirement Playbook. Go to thrivefinancialservices.com. John McMullen, welcome into the show. Hope you had a happy new year. We're going to be starting it off, unfortunately, it looks like without Jalen Hurts or Lane Johnson on the line of scrimmage for the Eagles today. What's the latest on the Eagles injury news? Yeah, no surprise there, Mark. Uh, it isn't going to be. And we knew Lane Johnson was going to be out to the playoffs. Jack Driscoll uh, was pretty clear he's going to be the right tackle. Um, I think that sort of equation may have changed if the Eagles believed that Lane would be out for the entire season. Then I think they would have entertained some other options. But for, for the short term, and I expect it to be short term, uh, it makes a lot of sense for Jack Driscoll. And, yeah, Jalen Hurts is getting better. I, I think if the Eagles need the Week 18 game, he'll be able to play in that game. Um, but it, it was just too soon uh, off a great T, grade two sprained uh, um, uh, SC joint in the shoulder because there's a risk. If you don't let that thing heal, um, it's, it's where the collarbone and the breastbone sort of meet. Uh, you're more susceptible to, to have an injury, a, a further injury. So it makes sense that the Eagles are being cautious there. Um, and, 
you know, the Eagles should be able to win this game at home at Lincoln Financial Field after three consecutive road games with Gardner Minshew. I think that's the hope. I think this is the hope. It's a a, a so-called hat and T-shirt game, and you celebrate the division title, the number one seed, and get as healthy as possible for the divisional round. Hmm. Uh, when John, it comes to – oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Gunner. Yeah. John, um, we, when you look at – the the way the Eagles should attack this Saints defense. I said a while ago, I think it's imperative to establish the run and work at the kinks that you had the last couple of games and running the football. You ran the football 33 times, 29 times. You didn't get the gargantuan results that we're accustomed to seeing this year. Whatever the problems were in terms of overcoming what defenses are doing, it's imperative to – to get that corrected today and take this Saints defense out of the game sooner rather than later. Yeah, yeah, and and you know that might be on paper. I think it makes a lot of sense, uh, Derek, in the fact that you know if you just look at the Saints defensively, they're much better against the pass than versus the run. Well, you do have to, you do have to realize they don't have the plus one of Jalen Hurts in the running game. That traditional, more traditional inside zone didn't work as well in Dallas without Jalen Hurts and the threat of pulling the football. Plus, Miles Sanders is dealing with a knee injury. Uh, You know, he missed some time in practice this week, was wearing a brace on his left knee, hopes to ditch it for the game, but he's not 100%. So everybody's a little bit banged up. Maybe he can't handle that typical workload, then yet need more Boston Scott, more Kenny Gainwell. So there could be some issues with that as well. It's going to be interesting to see how the Eagles attack Uh, the Saints. They're supposed to get Marshawn Lattimore back, and they haven't had him for a long time. That's one of the best corners of football. Uh, That will help, help them immensely. To me, and I heard you guys talking about it, It's all about those turnovers, man. I mean, this team is really bad, 31st in the league, the Saints, and minus 12 in turnover ratio. And you think about the Eagles, up to that Washington game, they were were plus 15 in the Mm -hmm. turnover ratio. They won it in all eight games up to that point. And since then, it's been the opposite. They've been the worst in the league in turnover ratio. So they have to clean that up. I think if they play a clean game, they might win passing it. They might win throwing it, but they're going to win it. But they have to play a, a clean game. John, I like to stay right there on the turnovers and not so much, you know, focus on what the Saints are doing turnover-wise, but, you know, the Eagles. The Eagles led, to your point, the, the turnover ratio battle right on up until last week. They lose out to Dallas, you know, four turnovers to one. And all of a sudden, Dallas has flipped them. Now Dallas, you know, is leading by three. They're plus 12. The Eagles are now under, under um, you know, double digits for the first time in a while. They're plus nine. They're number two in turnover ratio. Um, what, if anything, um, did you find out um, from Nick Sirianni this week about the turnovers because the Eagles got two losses and in both of those games they're averaging four turnovers a game. And I think it's bigger than that. And he was, you know, you don't see at least, you know, you see Nick get fired up in, in games on the sidelines, but he's pretty even keeled during the week. Uh, but he was pretty angry uh, about the turnovers um, after that Dallas game. But it it, it goes deeper than that, Seth. If you go back to the Week 10 loss to Washington, right, that's where it all started. As you mentioned, four turnovers there, four four turnovers against Dallas. But they're minus six. I think we lost John's audio there for a second. John, do you have uh, audio up and running? I think we lost John's audio there for a second, unfortunately. But I do want to get this in. The inactives just, did just come out for the Philadelphia Eagles. It is official that uh, Jalen Hurts is inactive, as is Lane Johnson, as we did know. Marshawn Latimer, as well as Chris Olave and uh, Pete Werner, are all active 
today for the Saints. Uh, they had some injury issues, especially Latimer, who was dealing uh, with a knee injury, I believe it was. And I know that Alave was dealing with a hamstring injury, but they are active today against the Eagles. Also, um, Andres Pete, their uh, left guard, uh, yep. is is in active today. Yep. So they're going to be a little banged up on that offensive line. So the Eagles can certainly relate to that. Our thanks to uh, – John McMullen, uh, we'll see if we can get him back a little bit later uh, in the show, maybe get his prediction for today's game. Uh, we'll be back in a moment with uh, not only our official predictions towards the end of the show, but what this Eagles offense can do against this uh, defense of the uh, New Orleans Saints, who do play aggressive despite the turnovers being a season worst in the NFL. We'll be back in a few here on the Jacob Media pregame show. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. At Action News, we cherish every moment. And it's our profound responsibility to bring you closer to your world. Never miss a moment. Trust the people at Action News. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one, and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. We all know that taxes are just part of life. It's true during our working years, but also in retirement. But what you might not know is up to 85% of your Social Security benefits might be taxed. Our team at Thrive Financial has helped retire thousands of people across the Delaware Valley by asking questions they never knew they needed to ask, including how their Social Security benefits might be taxed. It's time to be proactive on taxes. Get your Thrive Retirement Tax Playbook today. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go first! Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust, Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years, and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction. Go with trust. Go back. And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go birds. Score and save at Southeastern PA in Delaware with Colony Pools this football season. And let the experts close your pool with a custom Merlin safety cover in green for the birds. And if you join our winter watch team, we'll give you another 20% off and Colony Pools will handle it all. Keep your tiles on your pool, not in your pool. Fly with Colony right now, birds fans. Visit flywithcolony.com. Number one, Jeff D'Ambrosio, Destination Downingtown is rolling back prices for a December to remember. For a limited time, you can own, not lease, brand new 2023 Jeep Wranglers for only $39.95 or $339 per month. New Rams starting at only $39.95 or new Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs $189 per month. Zero down can deliver. Get the price you want, the selection you need, and the VIP treatment you deserve. Jeff D'Ambrosio, Destination Downingtown, big finish sales event.
Welcome back to the Jacob Media pregame show. Mark Farzetta, Seth Joyner, as well as Derek Gunn joining us here on the Jacob Media pregame show. We've talked about Jalen Hurts. We've talked about turnovers. We've talked about the run game most recently. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore is playing today, his first game since week five. Chris Olave also playing in today's game, who missed last week's win over the Browns. They are both active in today's game. So when you look at this game today, gentlemen, we've, uh, like I said, talked about the turnovers, probably the biggest difference between takeaways when it comes to the Eagles and the New Orleans Saints, how they have approached this season. But after that, there's something interesting in this. And I don't know if you guys have seen this stat just yet, but the Saints have a great red zone defense. The yep. Eagles, of course, with Jalen Hurts, have had a great red zone offense. You saw last week Gardner Minshew still being able to pull off that quarterback sneak for a touchdown to get a score against the uh, Dallas Cowboys. But the Saints red zone defense ranked fifth in the NFL with a 48.8 allowed success rate. The Eagles, though most of this, with the exception of one start with uh, Jalen Hurts, uh, have a 72.2 success rate one of the best the best actually in the nfl so when it comes to these clashing of powers in this matchup today who's going to be able to take advantage of this will it be the saints defense in the red zone in crunch time or will it be the eagles with gardner Minshew leading the pack at the helm trying to take those scores and put those touchdowns on the board you know d gun is really amazing to me that the saints can be ranked 23rd against the run and be ranked fifth in red zone. Mm -hmm. um, that tells you that they play some pretty good darn run defense, you know, in close proximity to their goal line. But they also, you know, are pretty solid in the passing game to be able to, um, you know, keep teams out of the end zone. Um, you know, listen, the, the Eagles lead the league in red zone, you know, conversion. They're number one you know, with that 70, what is it, 72%. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I look at these situations, sometimes when you see guys get tackled right around the three to four, it's like get the ball in the end zone, okay, because you never know what's going to happen. Just because you're in, you know, that plus red zone where you're inside the 10 doesn't always necessarily mean you're going to get there. You got less field to deal with, Um a lot of times teams will bring in the extra defensive linemen to put you in a situation where, you know, you can't run the football. Um, they got their edge guys making sure that they keep the edges set hard and you can't get outside for contain. Um, you know, it, it's really going to be interesting to see whether the Eagles can make some explosive plays that put them in the end zone rather than those red zone <laughs> situations where they find themselves struggling, you know, to get the ball in, into the end zone. The Saints defense has a bend but break, don't break mentality. You know, I've watched them a number of times this year, and it's amazing how they'll give up chunks of real estate getting down to the 20, but all of a sudden they clamp down like a pit bull once you get inside the 20. And that's directly attributed to the scheme of Dennis Allen. But I'm confident when you look, even with Gardner Minshew under center, when you look at the scheme of the Eagles and how they scheme up plays and, and the weapons they have at their disposal, you look at the one touchdown they got last week against the Cowboys to Devontae Smith. Great play call. He's wide open in a red zone touchdown. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so looking forward to seeing this chess match between Steichen and Sirianni versus Dennis Allen's defense and, and see how the Eagles attack this defense. When you look at Dallas Goddard is back and you look at the wide receiver combinations and the running back and the capability of doing a lot of things that they do, they should have a good measure of success but they can ill afford to shoot themselves in the foot. They have to get sevens and not threes against this Saints defense. It's imperative they put sevens up on the board and not threes. There is a big saving grace in all of this, and we talked about the run defense there. Seth, you pointed that out as well, the bend but don't break, Gunner, like you said. But when it comes to defending against the pass, the Saints have done well in terms of that you know, entire football field. But when it comes to the red zone, the one thing I'll hang my hat on is that they have a uh, passer rating when wide receivers are targeted. And, of course, Devontae Smith is a pretty good wide receiver, as, a, as is A.J. Brown. The New Orleans Saints have a, allowed a 98.2% 
passer rating when targeting wide receivers. Now, last week, we thought that the Dallas defense would be able to take some advantage of that because they were only there at about 94% with a passer rating when wide receivers were targeted. But it was funny to look at that and know that Dallas Goddard was going to be playing in that game, and he and Gardner Minshew have showed in the past in that one start that they had previously that they could be on the same page rather quickly. He was getting back into the swing of things last week, had three catches. But the fact that last week, and this kind of went unnoticed for a while there considering how the game ended, but you still had two wide receivers with Gardner Minshew finished with over 100 yards of offense for the Eagles when it came to the passing yards, receiving yards in that game. So, Seth, when you look at these wide receivers and how they'll match up, even with Marshawn Lattimore playing in this game today, how do you think Avante Smith and how do you, or Devontae Smith, and how do you think A.J. Brown are going to capitalize on their opportunities today? I don't think that the, the situation is any different for those two. I think the key guy, you know, is Quez Watkins after, you know, the week that he had last week. Oh, <laughs> um, I, I just I'm just one of those guys that believes that, you know, you tried something new last week because, you know, you send Quez down inside. Those are not Quez Watkins routes. You know, those slant routes, those inside routes, those aren't his routes. You know, so why do you have him running them? You run AJ on slants. You run AJ on over routes. Or you put a guy with a big body like Zach Pascal in that position and you run those routes. You don't run those routes for, for Quez. Quez runs routes. He runs a go route, a seven route, which is a corner route, a post route, okay? And, you know, and the deep over routes. Now, the Eagles talk about explosive plays. And you've got a guy that's one of the fastest wide receivers in the NFL. Why do you have him doing the opposite of what you know that he can do? You know, Tyron Matthew is not the defensive back that he used to be. I would be trying to stretch the field with Quez early and trying to hit the other two wide receivers on the short to intermediate stuff as well as Dallas Goddard. Again, Quez got about as many targets as Dallas Goddard got last week. That's insane, okay? <laughs> Dallas Goddard, and I get it, you don't have that many that many balls to go around. When you got two receivers, this, both of them going for 100, over 100 yards each, one for one, 113 and two touchdowns, and the other one, you know, for 103, I get it. I understand it. But you got to figure out a way to get, you know, arguably the top, a top three tight end in the National Football League more targets than three or four targets a game. It just has mm -hmm. to happen, even mm -hmm. if that means that you don't give Quez Watkins any damn target. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'd love to see Chris Watkins play a little bit more physical style there, at least stronger with the ball. I don't know how physical he can be. He's not the biggest in stature, biggest in frame. It's not, not, not going to happen. Not going to happen. It's not, not, it's not, it's not like, happen. Mark, it's, it's, it's not his thing. I said, when I no. watched those two plays right. last week, okay, now could he ramp up, you know, his intensity a little bit and, and, and fight more for those balls? 100%. But a guy like Zach Pascal is going to give you an extra 20 pounds, 15 pounds of weight. Guess what yeah. he's going to do? He's going to go down in there, and the guy's not coming over his back and taking that ball away. He's going to go up and fight for that ball, and the DB isn't going to wrestle it away from him. A guy like Quez, slight build, built for speed. He's a cheater, not a lion. Right. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand what, what type of animal you're dealing with, okay? And you don't send a cheetah, you know, in the jungle. You want the cheetah out running on the plane. The, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Yes. The and the tiger, they take care of the jungle. Mm -hmm. So you take Zach Pascal, you take AJ Brown, you know, even Avante, um, um, but um, um, Devontae Smith every once in a while. But you don't, he's a cheater. You don't want him running <clears throat> in the jungle. You want him and Quez running on the plains. Okay. That to I, me, to me, that's how I would be looking at it. I feel like I, I just watched a version of Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's the best way I think you can explain it, and that paints the, the, the best picture when it comes to a game like this. Uh, we we did not – I mean, we saw Dallas Goddard obviously participate in the game last week. He had a couple of good catches for the Eagles there. I mentioned in total it was three. But uh, when you get back into the swing of things, especially in a game like this where you do overall face a good passing defense, uh, when does it come down to the tight end actually stepping up, Gunner, like Dallas? 
Dallas Goddard to get back on that same page with Gardner Minshew if you're not able to get those wide receivers going? Well, I think it's I think it's imperative that you get in Dallas involved in the game. The Saints outside linebackers are now good cover linebackers. They're stout in the middle with Demario Davis in the middle of that linebacker, but you can beat them to the outside. And and Dallas Goddard is one of the best pass catchers for a tight end in the National Football League. Set this right. You have to get him more than three or four targets in a game. You know, you may have to get him the ball seven, eight times a game just to make that defense play that much more honest. And if he if you find that he's getting a lot of space and coverage, you keep going to him. We've become so spoiled watching um AJ Brown and Devontae Smith rack up yards. Sometimes you've got to flip the script, especially in a game like this. You know, and Dallas Goddard made me be your leading receiver in a game like this. Um, we were talking about Marshawn Lattimore. When he is healthy, he is one of the best corners in all the National Football League. There's no question about it. There's a reason why he is a Pro Bowl cornerback. I think one of the keys of the game to watch is, will they keep him on one side or will they have him follow A.J. Brown around on the field? Because that is going, you know, Marshawn Lattimore can play physical. A lot of corners are not physical corners. This this guy can play physical corner. He's very smart, tenacious type cornerback. Um, a lot of their back end lack of success this season is because he's been out since October 9th. He makes the back end of that defense go. Now, we don't know how healthy he is considering how long he's been out. We don't know what kind of game shape he's in. But the fact that he's back on the football field, that's another problem they have to worry about. They will bring him down in the box. They will blitz him as well. They will move him. But because of the wide receivers that he has to cover today, I'm curious to see how they utilize him. Will they leave him on one side? Will they have him shadow either Devontae Smith or A.J. Brown? Um, Marshawn Lattimore is a huge cog in their defense in terms of how Dennis Allen will scheme. But Dallas Goddard is a guy, if he gets the football, especially in the middle of the field, you know, not so much on the out routes, but I believe that you can work Dallas Goddard in the middle of the field and have a tremendous amount of success against this Saints defense. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, see it the same way, Seth? Go ahead. Yeah. Well, there, there's there's a couple of a couple of things. First of all, I think that you know you have to realize that football is a game of opposites sometimes, especially in the passing game. If you want the ball to go outside the hashes then that means you've got to work the inside of the hashes mm -hmm. to be able to get access to it. Now, what does that do? It, the more that the more successful you are in the middle of the field, the more a defensive coordinator is apt to make the adjustment to take that away, which now opens up the outside. So if, if, if outside is really where you want to go, you know, feature the inside. I love the fact that Gardner Minshew dumped a couple of balls off you know, check downs right over the middle to Miles Sanders last week. And Miles got, you know, really good yards in those situations. Take what the defense is giving you, okay? Because then what's going to wind up happening when you go three wide receivers and you keep dumping it, dumping it, dumping it, sooner or later those linebackers start to bite up a little bit. Mm -hmm. When they start to bite up, now you get Dallas Goddard, you know, on that sit down behind him or that deep dig behind him. Um, it, it, it's, it's just a game – of opposites as far as I'm concerned. Now, when you're talking about Marshawn Lattimore, the gun, I think the thing that, that begins to happen, if you're going to move him all over the place, mm -hmm. um, then there's some advantages there for this, you know, for Shane Steichen. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times there's only a handful of coverages you can run mm -hmm. when you got that guy shadowing an A.J. Brown all over the field. Because they can line A.J. up anywhere. They've done it all year. They can put him in the slot. They can put him out wide. They can put him at the XY receiver on the weak side all by himself. They can put him at, you know, the Z receiver, you know, on the strong side. They can put him wherever they want to put him. And a lot of times the biggest tell for an offense pre-snap is the little short motion. Uh, what's the short motion for? That's to kind of tell you where the, what guys are doing, you know, whether they're in man or whether they're in zone. A lot of times you'll see a guy go across the formation and they will – remedy either zone or man that by rotating the safeties from one way one way or the other to pick them up but a lot of times you know when you see that guy go in the slot that guy that's on him got to go with him that's a dead tell right there as to you know what type of offense you your defense you're you're in and what you're doing and the eagles coaching staff have to be ready to take advantage of that in my opinion Mm -hmm. uh, before we get to our predictions, I need to make one. I need one specific prediction. And Gunner, that's to your boy. That's to your man. Wrong again, D Gun. That's to your boy. 
Brandon Graham, does he get a sack today? Does he get double digits? Does he finally get there in his career? Does he finally – can you make the prediction today whether or not we're going to see Brandon Graham get a 10-sack season? Yeah, it's funny. I was texting with him earlier in the week. I said, man, can you hurry up and get this double-digit sack and get this over with? And he said, D-Gun is going to come when it's supposed to happen. You go back to that 2017 season when he was stuck on nine and a half, and he never got past that threshold. He now has two games to get one sack, just one more sack. He plays about 45 47% of the snaps. You're going up against a Saints offensive line that has had health issues, and Andrews Pete is not going to be in this game today, so they're going to have to juggle that offensive line as well. The key is, Andy Dalton getting the football out of his hands. I'm rooting for Brandon Graham, but because historically he hasn't done it, I keep teasing with him. Until you do it, it never happened. So I'm hoping <laughs> that he gets it today because even if the Eagles wrap it up today, you know they're going to pull a lot of their starters next week, but Brandon Graham p- plays that role where he's going to play some next week. He may not play 45 48%, but for depth issues, especially if you take out frontline guys like Hassan, Hassan Reddick and those guys, He's going to get more reps. So I'm going to sit here today and say, if he doesn't get it today, he will definitely get it against the Giants. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we'll get a guarantee at least when it comes to the last two games of the season, not just yeah, the second to the last game. There we go. Yeah. Look at the yeah. faith you have. Look at the faith you have in Brandon Graham. It's beautiful. Uh, Seth, there's one last thing I want to look at. We covered the turnovers. We covered uh, uh, Gardner Minshew getting the start again. Today. Another curveball to this team, aside from Taysom Hill or Alvin Kamara or anything like that, Special teams is going to be a huge factor today as well. I was reading a column from Dave Spadaro on Eagles.com talking about how Mike Rizzi, their special teams coordinator, who actually Eagles special teams coordinator Michael Clay, played under for a training camp when he came out of Oregon in 2013. He said that uh, Mike Rizzi is one of the best guys in the business to be a special teams coordinator. And when it comes to being creative, fake punts, fake field goals, kick return, whatever it might be, he could be creative. Is that at all on your radar going into today's game? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's right here in my notes, you know, and, and, and think about it. What the heck do the Saints have to lose? That's right. Okay. So they're going to be pulling out all the stops. And I think that anytime that the defense gets a stop, from their 35-yard line forward, I'm in defense stead, okay? I dare you to run a fake against my defense. I don't even care about the punt return. Britton Covey, you wave – I mean, put both hands up and wave them, okay? <laughs> and and just catch the ball and come on to the sideline, let the offense do what it does. But from their 35-yard line all the way, all the way down, we're just going to go defense stead. We're just not even going to put them in a situation – um, we may even go defense, stay on all field goals, so they don't get any ideas about none of that nonsense. I think that these are the types of games where if you fall asleep on stuff like that, you know, it keeps a team like this that you should be. It keeps them in the game because if they're if you're not on high alert at all times, and sometimes you can be on alert. You know, the great the great special teams coordinators they are scheming what you do great and what you don't do so good. You know, the little small mistakes that you make. If you're if you get a guy half a a half a yard lined up too far inside, they know that they can get the edge. And if they can get the edge, then they can get the first down. So I, I would just leave my defense out there. I mm-hmm. mean, in every in every conceivable situation, just take away any shot, any doubt, any thought that you might want to try something slick, shady, tricky, underhand. No, no, no. Do it. And we we're gonna put a couple of we're gonna put your your field goal holder and we're gonna put your punter on IR, okay? <laughs> I love hey, did, you, did, did you ever play for Buddy Ryan? Just just anyway. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> uh by the way, my mistake, uh, Darren Rizzi, not Mike Rizzi. My apologies. Uh let's get to our predictions, our official predictions for today's Eagles Saints kickoff gunner. What do you got? Well, we talked about how stingy the Saints defense is in terms of giving up points, but because of the Eagles offense, even with Gardner Minshew under center, I believe this Eagles team can find a way to put up at least 28 points. So with that said, I'm picking the Eagles to win this game 28 to 17. 28 to 17. Seth, what say you? You know, the Philadelphia Eagles defense, um, you know, has been was had been pretty stingy going into last week's game. Mm-hmm. And then they turn around and give up a 40 burger, you know, to their most hated rival. Um, granted, you know, 
three of those opportunities was on a short field because of turnovers, you know, by the offense. Um, but the Eagles managed to put up, you know, uh, 30 plus points again, and they lead the league, I believe. Let me make sure that I got that right. They lead the league in scoring at 29.7 yep. point, yep. points per game. Um, as good as the New Orleans Saints defense can be, um, I've, I, in a lot of ways, I find them similar, you know, as D Gunn has said, to the Cowboys, but not as good as the Cowboys because I don't think right. they can rush the passer the way that the Cowboys can. Um, and I think the Eagles feel the urgency, you know, of the situation. It's very, very rare that Nick Sirianni allows this team to play a haphazard game this week, one week, and come back, and they don't up the level of intensity. The Eagles haven't been home in three weeks. Three weeks in a row they haven't been home. They're, they're going to be home today. It's going to be 55 to 60 degrees. The fans are going to be rabid. You know, they ain't going to be going in and out getting cocoa and all that kind of stuff because the weather is going to be perfect, okay? So they're going to be rabid out there today. And I just think the Garden mm -hmm. Ministry is going to have a day. I think mm -hmm. the defense is going to have a day. I think BG is going to have two sacks today. I think that Jonathan Gannon is going to bring some heat today because these guys have a full week of practice and uh, Josiah Scott is going to be on his game today. I think that the Eagles just annihilate this football team today. Mm. And I like them to win this game and wrap up the clinch clinch. You know what the clinch clinch is, right? The NFC East and the number one seed, the mm. clinch clinch. I, I need to trademark that. <laughs> you do, um, definitely. <laughs> I think that, you know, they win this game today, um, 14 to 34. Woo! Whoa! Okay. All right. See, so, no, by the way, when you were given the temperature, 55 mm -hmm. degrees, I thought you were given the score, 55 to 10, Eagles. Yeah, Something yeah. like that. But, okay, we'll go with 34. All right. So, uh, I kind of see the game uh, playing out similarly to you, fellas, with the Eagles winning this game comfortably. Uh, I have this game being 27 to 14, Eagles okay. winning 27 to uh, to 7, going into the fourth quarter, and they get one of them garbage touchdowns. But I feel like the first touchdown by the Saints today is going to be a, a face-palming moment where they do have some type of trick play or Taysom Hill involved where they score their first touchdown that way. But I see Gardner Minshew playing very well today, minus the turnovers that happened in the first game against the Cowboys, obviously, in his first start. I don't see that repeating itself in this game against the Saints for all the reasons that we talked about. The Saints simply do not take the football away. So Eagles win this game 27-14. to 14. I think Miles Sanders bounces back in this game. And when it comes to a star receiver in this game, I think it's going to be Dallas Goddard rising to the occasion and helping the Eagles overcome that tough red zone defense in New Orleans Saints. So I think Goddard gets himself a touchdown today. Also, guys, let, let's watch closely. Darius Slay. Darius Slay had a bad game last week. Mm. Darius Slay spent the early part of this week jaw jacking with people on social media. Um, and so obviously it's under his skin. I expect Darius Slay to come back and play like the Darius Slay we've been accustomed to seeing play. Now, you know, Darius Slay hasn't had an interception in a game since week five against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, today could be the day Darius Slay gets that pick. Saints are depleted at the receiving core other than Chris Olave, who's playing with a gimpy hamstring. Um, let's see if, if, if Slay is back on his game today. Gotcha. And I'd also, also – go, go ahead. I think that, you know, listen, Darius had a subpar game last week. And I think, you know, you know, he committed the uncommittable, you know, by essentially throwing Josiah Scott under the bus as well. Yeah. Um, he needs a good game yeah. to kind of get some of the heat off of himself because, you know, that was unconscionable. And I applaud, I applaud Jason Kelsey for dealing with it in a roundabout way. I mean, I don't know if you saw it, but he was like, the pointing of the finger is something, you know, that you just can't do. Now, he wasn't right. pointing at Darius Slay, but he was pointing at Darius Slay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, uh, it is five and a half points. It was at five and a half, Eagles favorite. Then it was at six and a half when uh, Jalen Hurts yeah. practiced. Now it's back to five and a half uh, going into today's game. Thanks for everyone watching on 6abc.com, as well as the Jacob Media YouTube channel. For Derek Gunn and Seth Joyner, I'm Mark Farzad. I'll be along with you guys at halftime, by the way. Devin Caney is covering all things mummers for 6abc.com today, so I'll be along at halftime with John McMullen as well. Until then, hopefully it's a solid first half by the Eagles, making us feel comfortable about that second half. Be along with you guys for the Jake and Media Halftime Show later on today. Go Birds.
Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech, we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. My husband hadn't missed work in 15 years. His injury required months of rehabilitation, and unfortunately, the insurance company didn't see it that way. I was working two jobs, but it wasn't enough. One conversation with Pond Lee Hockey changed everything. We sat down, told him our story, and they guided us through the whole workers' compensation legal process. Pond Lee Hockey, tell us your story. Seth Joyner. I knew that they had a running game. Derek Gunn. He has put in the effort. Devin Caney. Had we not won the Super Bowl, what would we be saying? And Mike Missanelli. Well, you know how Philly is. Post game, now streaming on the 6ABC family of apps. Celebrating the life of your loved one is what we do at Life Celebrations by Givenish. When the matriarch of the Dalloway family died suddenly at 82 years old, Life Celebrations by Givenish stepped in. They will make this. The easiest thing that you, it's, it's, I know it's not easy, but it, they will make this as easy as possible. Life Celebrations by Givnish, customizing services as unique as the individual. I, I just know that my dad, who is in charge of everything, was, it, was not in charge of anything at that point when, when my mom passed. And uh, uh, again, just another shout out to this place for for making it easy turning tragedy into a celebration of life no matter how hard is what we do at life celebrations by givenish life celebrations by givenish customizing services as unique as the individual go for the beers go for the cheers go for the hit and the hits go for the scene go for the screens go for the gallery Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Continue your communication sciences and disorders education at South University within the Doctor of Audiology or Masters of Science in Speech-Language Pathology programs. With state-of-the-art labs, on-campus clinics, and extensive externship opportunities, students position themselves to be at the top of the job market. Stand out in the audiology and speech-language pathology profession by visiting salus.edu.